If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. So in this module, we're going to give you an introduction to the Ruckus Solution Engineering and specifically outline the roadmap and the function that Solution Engineering gives with regards to IoT and how that can speed and increase the adoption of IoT and how we can reduce the time to market for partners and for end customers. So the key thing to look at when you're looking at IoT is that uh, today there are a lot of manufacturers that are out there that are selling a different type of a technology. Now these could be things like LoRa or Zigbee or Bluetooth, but these tend to be much more of a protocol and a radio technology. Additionally, you have other companies or, or partners that are out there that are trying to monetize applications. So they've come up with an idea and they are developing a solution or, or more likely they are de they've developed an application that will utilize some kind of data stream to graphically display, represent or provide information about what's going on within the network. The problem is that these two are disconnected. So you have manufacturers who are building a technology and you have companies that are monetizing applications and there's nothing that's really joining those together that meet the end users requirements. And this is really where the, the Ruckus IoT suite comes in. So it allows us to connect the technology and the applications together that provide solutions. And by providing the solution, you're actually now able to sell an end-to-end -end product or an end-to-end -end solution that really solves the end customer's problem. So how do how does uh, uh, solutions and how do solutions help to solve the problem? So the answer is that this comes from a customer having an issue or a problem or a demand or a need. So the customer has a problem. I, I, I need to detect if there is a problem within my building. Really, the, the Ruckus IoT solutions team now looks at that in conjunction with the partner and says, well, you can't deliver that. You haven't got the technology to deliver that. So let's help us capture those requirements, understand fully what is the customer's requiring, what the technology requirements are, what the application needs are, and then really to start to develop and scope out the solution that will meet the needs of the end customer. So that will include things like capturing the overall requirements, defining all of the specific use cases, corner cases that will be uh, needed by the application to solve that end requirement. Then that'll be to develop the proof of concept, to, to pull together examples and demonstration platform that kind of outlines the, uh, the issues and the problems that the end user is seeing and how they can be best pulled together within, the, uh, within a platform to meet the demands and needs of the customer. Then on top of that, we can, by using that proof of concept platform, we can really start to expand the envelope of what the original requirements were. So rather than just meeting the original requirements that the customer thought that they had by developing a proof of concept and showing them that this is what you've requested this is what you're looking for we're actually able to now see where the gaps are in the original customer requirements and customer specification and start to fill those in and clearly define a, a solution that is going to meet all of the requirements of the customer not just now but maybe a little bit into the future as well once we have that, we can also then build on third party and additional services to actually better fulfill their requirements and start to integrate and implement that into a, an end user system. And that integration may pull in third party software, third party platforms or third party uh, applications that we can start to integrate into the platform and to really start to, to meet everything that the customer not, might need. And then on top of that, we can start to also develop and define a integration plan as well as a test specification plan and acceptance criteria needed for that customer. Once we've developed the solution, we can work with the partner to deploy that on the customer site and to really start to do the, the test and qualification of the, the solution within a real world deployment. And then the customer can work with that, with that partner to fully deploy and start to really utilize the application. The real thing here to understand is that by looking at it from a solution level rather than from a chipset or an application or from a uh, technology perspective, we get a much better and more stable platform, but we also are not limited to just focusing on one vendor or one particular device 
or one particular product that somebody's trying to sell. We're able to open that up and start to work with a wider group of partners, a wider group of software applications and in integration techniques to, to better define and de deploy a, a solution that really needs and meets the customer's requirements. Now, this would also help us to feed back into the roadmap. So it allows us to think outside of the box, utilizing third party solutions, but then it helps us to see what do we need to integrate into our roadmap going forward. So, you know, do we need to improve our, our VMS capabilities working with third party camera systems? Do we need to, uh, to add better support for certain types of devices or certain protocols or certain radios? So when we look at a solution from an application perspective, we need to be looking at a number of different interfaces and a number of different applications. So we need to be thinking about how do we integrate and what do we need to integrate and bring in from the ruckus access point if the ruckus access point is being used with the IoT radios. If we're using a third party access point, for example, we might be using a LoRa gateway. How do we bring in the data from that gateway? How do we manage it within our environment? And how do we check the status of that gateway and all of the devices that are attached into that gateway? Then we might have multiple different partner products in there. So we might have wired or wireless partner sensors. We might have platforms coming from you know, environmental management systems. So how do we bring that data into our platform and, get, and make it as if it's managed within the same environment? We might be using some different proprietary protocols or devices. So, for example, we might have blood pressure monitors or Bluetooth devices that are of a more proprietary standard. How do we bring that data into our solution and then develop it and, and expose it to the customer as if it's all part of the same managed environment? And the same can apply for things like door locks and tracking and location services. How do we bring in solutions that have generally been in a black box environment where they've connected with their own gateway? How do we bring them in and then expose that information within our controller and then out to our third party application? So this really becomes the key of all of these different API interfaces that are coming in from different partner services, from different cloud services, from different devices into our IoT controller. And to do that, we provide a range of services, connections and sockets within the controller that expose all of these different interfaces and allow us through our rules engine and through our rules programming interface and through our software development kit to get access to that data and then to expose that out to a, either a third party cloud or our in-house developed solution. So to do that, we provide a whole range of programming APIs both at a REST level, maybe at the LoRa, or maybe even a, a proprietary partner defined protocol, we can integrate those within our programming environment, within our uh, rules engine and within our rules programmer so that we can actually access that, all of the raw data coming through our system and then decide what we want to do with that. We then also have standard APIs within the IoT controller. We, we use MQTT and we have a range of HTTP interfaces that are give us access to a lot of this additional data as well. And one of the key things to look at here is that we actually provide a range of programming languages that allow people to develop those solutions. So within the solutions engineering team, we, we actually have use those flexible programming interfaces to talk to and connect to multiple different applications and APIs and uh, rules or integrated engines. And these are all a fully scalable interface. So one of the key things here, these are all designed to work and connect to very large systems with thousands of sensors or devices and connecting to multiple concurrent cloud or third party applications and services. So to do that, the key thing is how do we then bring these in and why do solutions work? Well, as we outlined earlier, people are looking to solve problems. They're not necessarily just looking for a programming or an API. And in a lot of cases, partners and or customers don't have the skill sets to actually bring that in. They may know what, think they know what they want, but they don't know how to achieve that. So solutions work because they allow us to, to take a proof of concept or an idea and show people very quickly using our integrated dashboard, rules engine, programming language and SDKs and actually achieve and solve those problems in a very short period of time. And we've proven this time and time again with our solutions engineering and with our proof of concept and deployable solutions where we're able to take ideas and proof of concepts for, for trade shows or for different demonstration platforms and convert those very quickly over time into real world applications that are able to be deployed. 
And these trials have been, for example, the integration of mapping or environmental monitoring or even video camera integration to IoT sensors to show very quickly how a proof of concept can be migrated into an application that can be deployed in universities or education or hospitality or MDU. And we've done these in a number of different applications and environments where we're able to very quickly migrate from proof of concept to real world deployed platforms. So an example of where we've done this has been with some simple deployments and proof of concepts that we've developed and they've evolved over time where we've done examples, for example, connecting standard Zigbee devices into a building environment. So here is an example we did in our Ruckus Sunnyvale Innovation Center, where we took a, a whole range of environmental monitoring sensors, door sensors, flood sensors, cameras, and uh, access control systems and fully integrated them all into an environment and a building to provide full building management. We also then integrated all of those events into a database and associated them within a VMS and were able to then associate events and alarms with video camera information so that if an event happens or an alarm has happened, we're able to pull up that data and show in real time you know, the, the information that triggered that event, who opened the door, where that person was and actually track them through the building. So very quickly, we're able to build a framework using third party APIs and applications that show how you can very easily manage a building environment and gather information. And the next thing is where do you take that information and do something with it? So, you know, if, a, if we're monitoring all of this environmental data, we can trigger alarms, we can detect if a temperature goes out of a certain threshold and we can, you know, then trigger an alarm or send a text message or, or a siren or something like that to actually then figure and, and provide useful information about what's going on within that building. In another example, we've actually taken uh, using ex a similar kind of thing with environmental data, but then then actually taking that data and, and attaching it to a specific vertical. So here we, we've taken an example with measuring CO2 temperature and humidity, and then use that within a, uh, a classroom or a lecture theater, lecture hall environment to actually get a, a good feedback for the state of the environment within a within a room or within a, a building which then can be used within an education to to show that uh, keep people's environment healthy to, for and, and uh, conclusive to a a good learning environment so here we're, we 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 use sensors that are able to monitor the carbon dioxide the temperature and the humidity and then by setting alarms and thresholds for tolerances to keep the environment within a certain predefined level of clean air and low CO2, which helps people to keep their brains occupied and keep their brains uh, in a good operating environment. We're able to then monitor this over time and show that the environment within the classroom is, is conducive to good learning and, 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 uh, and high education uh, intake and, and retention of knowledge. So this example was deployed within a university to show the students that they are in a clean environment, a good environment, and this, this can be expanded over time so we can add multiple classrooms, we can have multiple environments. And again, the, the system is designed to allow the manager or the administrator to monitor, adjust, and to proactively now deal with events where the temperature maybe is too high or the CO2 level is actually going up into a dangerous level. They can now proactively now deal with that event and that alarm and, uh, and clear, the, uh, clear the air within that room by opening windows or proactively turning on air conditioning. So the key thing here really is to look at how solutions evolve over time. So you can see that we started off, you know, developing a very simple solution that integrated floor plans with our CIC and some simple temperature, humidity and uh, door sensors and flood sensors into, a, into an environment. Then the next thing we can do is we can ex evolve and start to bring in more environmental data. So CO2 as well as other data. And we can start to look at how that relates to the standards within different countries or regions of the world and how those standards can be related to triggering alarms or to proactively uh, deal with uh, levels within that environment. Then the next thing we, we can do is we can take in more information and do more, more useful things with it. 
So now we actually, a next, another project we did was we looked at the door contact sensors now, and we look at things like fire doors. So we can look at a fire door and say, well, somebody's opened a fire door. That's not a problem. Somebody's gone through it, but that fire door has been left open now for one minute, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. And we can set an alarm so that if that door is left open, we can trigger an alarm and we can set a notification to the facilities team to now go and close that fire door because it's, it is a risk. Uh, there might be a citation if somebody uh, is properly to open a fire door. We can also do things like detect if somebody's been tampering with, with sensors on doors and again proactively go in and look at that uh, that fire door and detect if there's somebody been playing around or, or, or manipulating or uh, incorrectly uh, processing or handling that, uh, that device. So we, we're over time able to now build a, a wider range of solutions based on you know sensor input and analyzing that data. The next thing we also now are looking at is things like how do we do asset tracking, not just for COVID, um, but also for more advanced solutions. So we're able to uh, to develop a solution now that integrates mapping technology, that integrates the Bluetooth technology and the access points to now do things like asset tracking, geofencing, black and white listing, panic buttons, and all a whole range of location services all built on the same platform to meet uh, specific requirements. And then we really want to start looking at is how can we integrate all of this into a single platform? So here we are developing what we call our insights platform that uh, allows us to integrate all of these different techniques, technologies, rules, applications into a single environment and give somebody a single pane of glass where they can manage their devices, get insight into battery signal level and networking performance, as well as look at individual environment at a room or device level, and also things integrating into a floor plan with video and uh, location-based services all on a single pane of glass. That then in turn will be run into our, our demo booth platform that will allow people to go out and demonstrate this in a real world environment without spending months specifying and developing new uh, new demonstration platforms. It will all be integrated into a, a single uh, single platform and a single box solution. So Insights version 6 is, has been launched and is out there available today for any, anybody who wants to be able to use them. This is based on our 1511 IoT controller and it integrates a whole range of partner platforms and solutions within the same environment. So we've integrated our Axis video management system, our partner Axis communications, we've integrated the IoT Insights platform to connect to the VMS and to work with the Axis VMS. We've done the same integration with IP Configure and their ORCID platform that allows events that are triggered within the IoT platform to be directly associated with a camera in a location so that if a door opens or a door is left open or somebody is roaming with a key card, we're able to associate that event and pull up the video of that event happening in real time. We've also integrated Telconet and their building management system. So their, their thermostats, door, motion, water sensors are all integrated within the Ruckus IoT Insights platform so that we're able to monitor temperature, humidity and a whole range of other statistics on a room level basis and see if somebody's been, uh, been adjusting thermostats out of range and things like that. And then we also support a whole range of standard Zigbee devices. So, you know, motion sensors, water sensors, vibration sensors are all integrated and monitored within the system. And every time a event happens, it's logged into a database and associated if there is a camera in that location associated with a camera, an event and a timestamp. We also, in addition to providing partner support, also provide a whole insight into device monitoring and capabilities. So we're able to look at each individual device that is attached to the controller and we're able to get a, an, uh, a view of that device. So we're able to look at the, the lo what we call the loss of signal. So when was the device last seen? We're able to look at the signal strength between the access point and the, the Zigbee device, if it's Zigbee, and actually then say, well, this is a good connection, it's stable, and we have no, uh, no issues at an RF level. So it'll help with device mapping and device deployment. We also have monitor things like the line quality indication. So not only are we looking at the RSSI or the signal strength, but we're also looking at bit errors on the line as well, maybe due to, to noise or to the 2.4 gigahertz of its uh, Zigbee being congested or, or overly used. 
And then on top of that, we can also look at things like battery level. You know, as we look at IoT, one of the biggest problems that uh, deployments have is managing the device. So, you know, is the device's battery OK? Is there an, an alarm on a, on a battery? So we're able to monitor all of this information about the device at a physical and a data level, but also we're able to look at battery indication and start to preemptively plan battery replacement or power supply monitoring of devices. All of this information is generated and st stored into database and we can run st alarm reports and get status information about devices by querying the, uh, the Insights platform and it will give us state and time information as well as all the alarm information about all of our devices within our system. We've also integrated into the Insights platform the uh, ability to add floor plans. So now you can import a floor plan drop the devices onto those floor plans and show in real time status changes on the floor plan on multiple floors and see device status, alarm indications and clears, uh, cleared uh, alarms all on the same floor plan. The user interface also now is designed so that the user never really needs to go into the IoT controller. Once the administrator has onboarded the devices onto the IoT controller, the, the dashboard now allows you to import that device into our Insights platform, configure the device, drop it onto a floor plan and monitor it all from within a simple user interface. And we also have a full system builder as well so that the user never really needs to go into the rules engine or the programming language that's running behind the, the, uh, the platform. It's all done from within a single user interface. So in addition to our insights, really, it's we, we've also developed what we call the IoT demo pod. So this is a fully standalone IoT showcase platform. So it's designed to run in a single shipping case, can be pulled, pulled out of the shipping case very quickly by one or two people set up and allows you to uh, to bring up the floor plan and the insights platform to demonstrate all of the capabilities within the IoT suite from a single box. So it fully integrates all of our partner solutions, including vape and sound detection, door lock, online door lock from customer and partners like Asa Abloy and Dorma Kaba, and we'll be adding new, new partners going forward. We have all of our generic Zigbee devices supported and integrated within the, uh, the platform. We will also be supporting a range of BLE products as well as asset tracking and location-based services, panic buttons, and also video integration as well. So you can showcase all of the capabilities of the platform from a single box and a single mobile demo suite, including a whole range of video tutorials that will help you to set the system up and demonstrate it as quickly as possible. And to speed the system and to speed the capabilities, we've also developed the IoT Development Kit. This is basically a full evaluation platform for everything that you need to demonstrate and showcase IoT. So it includes a turnkey uh, Intel Nook with a fully imaged solution, including the IoT controller, all of the virtual machines and rules and everything that's needed to, to demonstrate the IoT platform yeah, straight out of the box. It's ready to be deployed in a small scale environment, you know, many hundreds of devices. And we also include some of those devices as part of this, this equipment. So we include, you know, the option for a, a vape sensor, water, door and motion sensors, including temperature and humidity. It includes the switch, the cameras and the access points all of the um, rules engine that are needed. And also there's an upgrade expansion pack if you want to show building environmental management as well is all included within the, uh, within the evaluation kit. This is available today from both Annexter and Wave as uh, and their, their contact details. You, are, you can go ahead and buy that today with everything that you need to get started. So that concludes our introduction to the Ruckus IoT Solutions Engineering and Solutions Product. And in the next few modules, we're now going to go into detail and give you an examples of how we use solution engineering now to actually develop products, develop platforms and actually solve real user end examples. And also we're going to show you how we can walk through each of the different IoT Insights platform capabilities and give you an introduction to what we can do. Mm -hmm.